It's been around two months since my last upload. In that time, I have been working on a chess animation plugin for Mana. If you're not familiar with Mana, it is a Python library created by 3BlueOneBrown. It's a surprisingly easy tool to use when making math adjacent videos. I have been using it for around a year now and ended up wanting to create my own plugin for it. What you're seeing right now is a brief overview of what this plugin can do. My main goal in making this video is to show you how to use the plugin if you are wanting to make a chess video or at least inspire you to make your own animations in Manum. I promise you since I started using Manum around 6 months ago, I have probably spent at least 3 hours every week with it. It really is just that satisfying to use and I recommend giving it a try if you are at all interested. I'm not going to get into how to install Manum, but there are plenty of other videos out there that do just that. Also to install the chess plugin I created, there is a link in the description with some instructions. Okay, so now onto the actual video. The first thing that needs to be done when creating a chess scene is to create your board. You can see that in the code on line 6, I have created a variable called chess board. This variable creates an instance of the board object class. Now you can simply do the self.add function to add the chess board to the scene. I also created the ability to customize the colors of the chessboard. As you can see starting on line 6, where we created the instance of the board class, there is now some new arguments. You can specify the dark square color, light square color, and the respective highlight colors. Or leave it blank like in the previous code if you prefer the green and white board. Now here is how to set the board positions. First, you need to get the fin string for that specific board state. If you're on chess.com, you can get the fin from pressing the share button on a game or analysis board. Then once you have the fin string, you just have to call the function set board from fin on the chessboard object we created earlier. Now when you add your chessboard, it will have the correct position. However, if you just want the standard starting board, you don't have to include the fin string. You just have to call the function and leave the arguments blank. The next part of the video is what I spend the majority of my time working on. I will show you how to animate an entire chess game using the PGN notation you can get from websites like chess.com or LiChess. In this example, you can say I'm opening the game underscore PGN file. You do not have to do this. And if you want, you can just paste the entire PGN into the code as a string. So now that the PGN is a string, I need to convert the PGN into moves that the code can understand. After we do this, we can now call the play game function. In order to do this, we need to enter the scene as self, then put our chessboard, and then the converted moves. That is all you need to do to get the entire PGN to animate. Now I will show you how to add an evaluation bar. Line 9 and 10 of the code is creating the evaluation bar object, then repositioning it to the left side of the chessboard. The next step is to get the values for our evaluations. I do this on line 17 through 20. You can see I am grabbing these values from a file. However, if you wanted to, you could just have a list that contains all of the values in the code directly. Now that you have all of this, you just need to add the evaluation bar and the evaluations to the play game function. And then when you play the game, the evaluation bar will animate. Another cool feature I added was the ability to draw arrows, just like the ones you see on chess websites. This is very simple to do and only requires one line of code. You just have to call the draw arrow function on the chess board and specify the starting point and the ending point of the arrow. You can also draw as many arrows as you want and can remove them with the function remove arrows. As well as drawing arrows, you can also mark squares. This is also easy to do just by calling the mark square function and specifying the squares coordinate. You can mark as many squares as you want and also remove the marks with the function unmark square. Now for the final extra features that you might use. The first being that you don't have to use PGN notation to move the pieces. In fact, when you convert the PGN, it is actually turning the game into this notation, where we have a tuple consisting of the starting coordinate, the ending coordinate, and then the promotion piece if there is one. In the code, you can see this notation being used. The second and last feature I will show 
is a simple function that will allow us to clear the board and set up the example for promoting a piece. This function is the clear board function. You can see it on line 15. Now that we cleared the board, we can set up an example where the pawn is ready to promote. In this case, the pawn promotes to a queen after the move c7, c8, q for a queen. Now that is all the features for the Man of Chess plugin. I plan on adding more features like the ability to change the piece images, or let the user choose the color of the markings, and other features. However, before I do any of this, I want to get some feedback and make sure people will actually use this so I'm not just wasting my time. So if you found this video helpful or entertaining or you plan on using Nanum Chess, do let me know, it will make my day.